everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. As has been shown before, Luxium is having a bit of an issue when it comes to the amount of people that are watching the CCV, the concurrent viewers. There's peak viewers that can peak pretty darn high, but concurrent, it is still big. Don't get me wrong, but it's nothing like what they used to have. They used to have tons more, closer to 10K, closer, you know, to that level. Uh, like I said, the peak is around 5K, around 4.5, 4.8K, 4.9K here for Luxium uh, Shoe specifically. For um, Luka Kanashiro, you have that weird, um, that spike that happens sometimes in uh, VStats. Don't take that as like the actual spike 4775 because that's a small anomaly. Everything else is around 3000, 3200, maybe around there for the spike. And then we have uh, Vox, which is actually having the lowest one. Like I said, you have these little spikes here. These little uh, EKG looking things, little heart monitor looking things. It's a weird uh, thing with the API uh, that happens when, you know, they, they pull the API, I guess, from YouTube. Has weird situations like that the vox pov there you go it has uh 1788 and 2284 which is the official uh peak that is way less than what they used to have they used to have way more but still just being objective here that is something like a person like myself who is an indie would love to have those numbers those would be peak indie numbers but those as a large golden boys that they are for needy sanji and the ones who used to be doing like i said a lot more than that uh, it is quite crazy for them to have this situation right now. Makes sense though. She was one of the only remaining members with no scandals and especially the only one in Luxium. If people still want to watch, he's the safest member of their former most popular group. He also gets Niji GTA boost. He gets more JP fans from Niji GTA, not as much as Meloko, but still noticeable. Yes, because he can speak fluent Japanese as far as I know. At least conversational Japanese. I'm not sure if he's like at a business level of Japanese like a business conversation, business meeting type of level, but he's definitely, I believe, in just regular conversational Japanese. Makes sense. Vox is the issue with stream parasocials in the black stream, being the most prominent speaker due to his lies and thoroughly reading the documents. Uh, Luca has the Razel doc. Meanwhile, Shu has managed to avoid any big controversies in 2024. As far as I know, even in 2023, there were no controversies, and if there were any, they were tiny in comparison to everything that's been happening with uh, Luxium lately. He has it still doing really well compared to other EN agency male VTubers, with the possible exception of Holostars. That's why I doubt any of them will graduate anytime soon. They won't. Like I said, the numbers are still good. I'm pretty sure their super chats are still going to be good overall. These are nothing to, to cough at, nothing to, to, to be like, ah, to scoff at and be like, ah, no, it's nothing. Uh, as an indie VTuber, I'll tell you, and even as a, in small agency VTubers, wish they could have that concurrent viewership, even if they're not at the peak numbers that they were. Uh, over a thousand is like the holy grail for a lot of small creators, including myself. Luka CC wave, CCV waves kind of sus. Bought of the stream at 140, down at 150, while Vox and Shoe CCV at the same, both same time. Um, there's no sign of normal body since sine wave. Uh, what's really odd though is that two streams dip in views and one stream spikes it implies a bunch of people had multiple streams open and they all focused the window on lucas pov for some reason or some other weird stuff happened so it could be a lot of weird things happening but um it is like yeah people are saying you know the same thing that i'm saying it's nothing to scoff at nothing to be like oh my god no uh but compared to what they used to have it is not great and i'm glad shu being one of the people who actually isn't in any controversies I'm glad shu at least is getting uh, some recognition here. Time sure as heck flies. It has been one year since Mista has graduated, has announced the graduation at least. He graduated uh, August 27th of 2023, as is shown in this document here. So it is not yet like the full time that he has graduated, but it's when it was announced, which is crazy because no one expected Mista to graduate. Although there were some at the time, there were some grumbling going about in his regular speeches like that's where we found that was around the time that we found out that um Nidhi sanji only gives about maybe two or three percent of the merch sales to their livers uh other complaints that he was having he didn't seem very happy during this time he seemed like he was having more and more issues either with management themselves or with things that management was doing or you know just the way things were running or something there were a lot of grumbling going on on his end people were looking at his pls and such to see more of what was going on. The fact that it's been a year since uh, since this feels odd. The one to two punch of Nina graduating followed by Mista. So soon is a, was a warning sign. It was. It was a harbinger of things to come. 
uh, we had, you know, terminations and such that came after that. And more concernedly than popping back up, you know, we also had um, Poma, which was a big graduation in January. You had uh, Kyo, who was a big graduation in February. And also we had, you know, the February thing that happened with Selene as well. The termination. A lot of things happened that we had Mika Militika, Bobo, and others that were popping off and just leaving. Uh, so it was kind of the dominoes were starting to fall a little bit. Things have calmed down for now, but who knows who the next one's going to be. Then we never got the Trash Taste X Mista episode that we hoped for. Can't believe it's been a year already. And more than likely, more things are going to come for Nidhi Sanji EN because of the recent way that the organization has kind of abandoned the branch and let them fend for themselves for the most part. Here we have someone reading through 4chan um, in regards to uh, Fillion's copyright disaster. Taking a look at what the 4chan people rock. posted. The VTuber Fillion has been in some recent controversies. The VRChat model that she uses, well, it turns out the creator doesn't really allow for you to make merch out of it. We have received numerous inquiries regarding a specific VTuber. We do not permit the use of Mint, the model that Fillion uses, for sales of plush and distribution of skins. It's over for indies. If you have ever bought an asset from Booth, you are fu- Mint, no, I'll save you. And, and that's not the Mint they're talking about. Yep, that's yeah. the one. <laughs> Flip, boys. It's over. Buys a model from Booth without changing anything. Makes merch out of it. Creator wasn't contacted. Fillion doesn't really seem to accept terms of conditions. Is reading guidelines that f hard for women? Indies when they find out that copyright exists. Seriously, are all people this stupid? Well, some people just aren't meant for uh, having any type of merch. Um, I think Fillion, uh, like I mentioned before, just going over this one more time, over my belief in what happened with Fillion, uh, she left it to someone else. Um, like I said, I do not prescribe malice to things that can be easily explained with ignorance. Hanlon's razor. Uh, I think she's just ignorant of the fact that she needed to get all these permissions. I think she thought that since it was free, since it was etc., since other people were using it for, because I, I believe there was a game that was using it for merch type stuff that was using it. It was a gotcha game or something like that believe that she thought that since the gotcha game could use it, she could use it. Again, this is just my thoughts on it. And she made a big mistake because of the fact that she was that big. She should have double checked. Uh, maybe she thought she double checked. Maybe because she's a part of Mythic, she thought Mythic was going to be handling that. Since Mythic is the one that helps with merchandising and all that type of stuff. They're not a full-fledged VTuber organization. They are more a talent agency that has VTubers in it. So they are the ones who kind of manage your merch lines. They manage your sponsorships. They manage even collabs in some cases, trying to get collabs with other creators and other mythic creators and such like that. So I think it's one of those things where it is a crazy situation that happened. And uh, Fillion just didn't know how People to handle it correctly. Is Fillion evil? She didn't know how to handle it correctly. This is again, DJ and Diary doing the Fillion thing. Um, is person, a person that I've had in a showcase just to be a... Uh, completely transparent is a person I've had on the VTuber showcase um, and says having your own Mer Nendo is a professional milestone. Fillion is anything but professional. Not in a bad way. <clears throat> she is chaos incarnate. She's just a chaos VTuber. And um, I think she just didn't know how to handle it professionally, how to handle the professional side of VTubing because she's probably never had to handle it specifically merchandising and such. Merchandising is such a weird thing. It can definitely be uh, something that, you know, even I don't know how to handle merchandising to be the most part. Still, she hopes she is an Android. She's creative, cute, and heartfelt and very energetic. I still like and respect her despite the incident. She deserves an Android. But at the same time, I hope she takes her copyright seriously this time. Wonder if it's buying current models somehow or just hiring someone to make a new one. The Android of a different model, yes, but this model, no. Exactly. Uh, it says... While she says they're trying to settle everything behind the scenes, maybe after buying exclusive rights from the artist, I don't see any reason why she won't get an endo. I don't know why he was downvoted for this, but people downvote for weird reasons on Reddit. It is Reddit. Hoshi Kawasara is a Nidhi Sanji liver, and she's going to be collabing with McDonald's. Of course, we already know what happened with uh, Rosami and McDonald's. So I wonder if NDF will boycott Niji now, or do they love the company much more and give them free pass when harassing Niji EN members for eating McDonald's? I think the thing is... A lot of people on the NGN side, the ones that are doing the boycott, that are doing the the, the followers of NGN, who are doing the boycott and doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, the Slacktivist side doesn't really hit Nidhi Sanji JP very much. It doesn't hit JP very much at all, like the JP um, scene when it comes to those types of things. So I don't think that uh, Hoshikawa Sara is going to be having much more of an issue compared to like Rosumi. Rosumi, sadly, is part of the EN side, which uh, over here, in the English-speaking countries in the West, we have a lot of slacktivists, a lot of people who 
put their noses where they don't belong and they start talking about politics and putting politics into VTubing when it doesn't really belong. Unless a person is actually actively putting politics into VTubing, he shouldn't really respond with politics in kind. Only respond that way when it is actually brought up first. Yikes at the amount of spam bots right here. Hoshikawa Sada is, you know, having her thing with uh, Sell Tomorrow, July 24th. It's so Hawaiian, you want to eat it, right? So they're going to be, that's that's a Japanese uh, McDonald's one that they're going to have. It's a, it's a Hawaiian burger, it looks like. Um, and there's like apparently a lot of bot. Yes. Oh God, look at this bot. Look at these bot, bot person. Holy crap. That's a lot of bot. That's just, they're doing different. Holy crap. That is spam uh, to the nth degree. I don't even want to know what all these spam things say, but holy crap, that's spam to the nth degree. Wonder if it's delicious. They're just... Maybe it's not a bot, but they're spamming like holy crap. Like they want to get attention or something. I don't know what's going on there. That's just weird. It seems to happen a lot on the on the JP side. To be fair, the spam bot problem kind of plagues the entire Japanese Twitter sphere. You almost guarantee the nice amount of bots donning the Hindustani username, replying to every Japanese language tweet that became viral has about greater than 30k likes. I'd say it's more the case of Elon Musk incompetency than Niji trying to manipulate things. Yeah, it's not Niji Sandy trying to manipulate things. I never took it as that. I took it more as, you know, uh, Elon Musk's Twitter has a big bot problem, has a big, yeah, has a humongous bot problem. Russian bots and other ones uh, are really going crazy there. Wonder how the NDF are going to just justify this actual sponsorship should cause greater backlash among the NDF than individual livers posting McDonald's meme images. But that would require actual more consistency, which they lack. Uh, more Twitter VTuber activists, and they stay more in the EN sphere. It seems more to be in the EN sphere compared to the Japanese sphere. So I don't think, I honestly don't think Sada's going to actually ha have any negative stuff happening there. Pretend not to see it, especially when it's JP. Yeah, a lot of people are that way. A little bit of a Wayu meme, a Sayu meme going on here. Treat your pet Wayu with care, hugs, and lots of pets, of course. She doesn't look very pleased with the pets in this one, actually. Uh, right there, she doesn't look very pleased. But there you go. She actually likes the pets. Okay, she was reacting probably to something else, and the pets were a positive thing for her. Yes, always treat your Sayu with care. Treat your, your cyber uh, donkey thingy, because she has the whole donkey uh, onesie. Treat your cyber cat slash donkey cat slash donkey something or other uh with care please always do that this is a big difference in my opinion this is just an opinion from your squirrel the big difference when it comes to uh nidi sanji versus hololive she asked the ceo of hololive cover to go and you know be a part of the collab that they were having the civil war thing between uh, coffee and tea to kind of give his idea his input on the whole thing even more surprising he responded best girl might even be busy in the middle of plans and work but he made sure to give time to his talents like some great dad uh participating for his child school project yes exactly hey claude they could just effing ask they did ask in freaking hollow life let's take a look what bay says can we talk about the big collab a little bit i have so much fun oh, i was so I exhausted but i had so much fun it's been a while since i've organized like such a big collab i think that's the biggest collab i've ever organized well, it was nine people did you guys enjoy it oh. yeah it was, it, was, um, it was fun how long did it take for me i think i wanted to do it like uh i started planning for it like at the beginning of uh july i think i wanted to do it asap but also because i was commissioning so many assets and stuff like that obviously you know it takes time for people to draw stuff how did you get yago into the i asked <laughs> <laughs> just that's asked what, that's all it took i, I asked <laughs> why do you make iris a judge oh yeah well here's the thing i i wanted to pick judges that were biased you know because i know that you know iris is team soda Ooh, Ina, people that weren't like, biased yet. Food and just team drink in general. She's just she just seems like a foodie. And then True. Shiori was team water. She made it very clear. <laughs> so I thought it'd be you know it would be funny to have judges who weren't on either team. You know clearly. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean that's very good. And that's the thing. I mean she all she had to do was freaking ask. All she had to freaking do is ask. That's the part that I wanted to cover. She, all she needed to do was ask. It's like what Claude Claudemark said, except that it works for it actually works in a hollow life slash cover and it doesn't work in Nidi Sanji any color. So that is the big difference, Mr. Claude. Uh yes, they could just effing ask. And they actually she actually did effing ask. And of course, it had to fit within the schedule. It was probably like a quick like five minute thing that uh the CEO could fit in, but he could have easily been like, sorry, I'm very busy. I can't do this. A lot of things. There's a lot of growth happening because they are trying to expand into different markets and doing different things right now. And that is the thing that um, could probably Riku does all the time and other CEOs do all the time. I'm too busy. I'm sorry. I can't do that. We have some interesting news in regards to a VTuber, a Twitch VTuber, not a like 200K 
uh, subscribed or whatever VTuber, but a smaller VTuber, a medium-sized VTuber, whatever you want to call it. Claudia Moneta paid $68,200 to a charity to play games with Pokimane, Valkyrie, and Iron Mouse and Sea Dog VA. This is the uh, actual visuals here. Gaming session with Pokimane, 30,000. Hangout game session with Iron Mouse and Connor, 23,500. Collab with Valkyrie, 14,000. You could see this as a big investment in the future it could be i mean it is tax deductible in most places as a charity thing uh you know it's charity slash business expense whichever way she wants to put it out it is a charity thing that she could definitely write off because that is a lot of money in there so glad that it's going for charity uh cwa holds a charity uh which was over 245k more than 23 event they did 574k thanks to this 68k that they got from there so who is claudia moneta uh she is a vtuber who um just going to go over some of the things that they have put out here. Uh, things here. They uh, Connor got confirmation that this has been paid in full. It's like, who are you? <laughs> to be able to pay 68200 in full. Money of that like that in the bank. Holy crap. Maybe even had to take out a loan for this. We don't even know. Could have, could have had to take out a loan. It's insane though. And so here she has my winning auction bid. Let's go. 68200 going to a charity. That is amazing overall. Uh, crazy as well. Uh, about Claudia Moneta, Pokimane as well, about 30.7k. Uh, Claudia Moneta, the auction gaming session. Valkyrie, same thing. Uh, Claudia Moneta, 14k for the collab with Valkyrie. They're all reacting to this. And it is great news for the charity that Connor's doing with Iron Mouse. It is great news for charity overall. And I do hope that this is a charity, it's a collab, a charity collab for the ages. That's my hope. That is my absolute hope. And thank you so much, uh, Claudia, for doing that. Of course, you don't need thanks from me. You got thanks from, from all the big guns and everyone else. I'm pretty sure the charity also appreciates that. And it is a huge, huge help to any charity to have that kind of donation. We have Claudia Moneta today for today's VTuber Showcase. So thank you for being here, everyone. Uh, we're going to take a look at what they do. They are a chill cyborg VTuber who is you know streaming Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, it appears like. Uh, they are, you know, have 4.7k followers on Twitch, have recently been doing Just Chatting and Elden Ring. Before, they've done Dark Souls 3. They've done things like that. Let's take a look at what they have here. The cutest idol. How the fuck? I ain't no cute. I'm dinkster, yo. Look at this. Look at this shit. Look how scary this looks. Aww. So real busty. <laughs> I know. I know. I had you shaking there. You look like a puppy. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what do you think? Of course, you're freaked out because I'm so badass and scary. But y'all, this looks so freaking awesome. This looks so freaking cool. Oh shit, now this on the other hand, this does not look so cool. Why must you do this to me? This was the wrong choice. What have you done to me? I've become e-girl. Oh god, there the you go. The so yeah, there we go. A little bit of the uh, look at everything that Claudia is doing. A little bit of the look at uh, her type of um, comedy, her type of little, you know, her funniness. Her personality i wanted to have something to show her personality she does have a youtube as well let me take a look at that she says she's a chill cyborg vtuber enjoys games of all genres especially souls like games which is why she's playing elden ring recently and we have Yo, claudia moneta up? here my name is claudia she is uh putting her playthroughs here she's doing her vods uh it looks like it's primarily vods and oh no she does dual streaming so she's also doing dual streaming which is always great to see i do dual streaming as well and Thank you again for being a part of this VTuber showcase, Claudia Moneta. And thank you as well for your recent charity donation to the Sea Dog and Iron Mouse uh, charity drive that they recently had. All for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out, Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.